Okay, in this video, we're gonna be doing number four from the 2025 AP pre-calculus exam. This is the one where you just do um, a lot of like symbolic manipulation stuff and a lot of solving. So let's look. Uh, the function g and h are given by g of x is two log base three of x and h of x is four cosine squared of x. First up, we need to solve g of x is equal to four for all values of x in the domain of g. So in the domain of g, kind of important here. Uh, so this is a log function. Uh, which means we just need x to be greater than zero. So anything less than zero, we're going to kick out if it shows up. So I'm going to start off by writing uh, what we're doing. We're doing g of x is equal to four. Um, and that means that two log base three of x is equal to four, which uh, what I'm going to do here is just divide by two log base three of x is equal to two. And then I'm going to use base answer exponent. Um, so the base is three. The answer is x, the exponent is two, so x equals three to the second. And three to the second is nine. And that's our answer, and uh, I think we're done. Now, you might approach this slightly differently. You might say, uh, instead of looking at it as two log base three of x, you might immediately think, I'm gonna use coefficients become exponents, which would give you log base three of x squared is equal to four. This becomes a slightly different problem, right? It's still base answer exponent, so three to the fourth is x squared. So x squared is three to the fourth, which means that x squared is 81. x squared equals 81 has two solutions. Uh, they are nine and negative nine. So if you went with this one, you'd have to then think carefully about the domain and cross out the negative nine because negative nine is not in the domain of this thing. So you do have to watch out for that. Let's take a look at part two. Solve h of x is equal to three for all values of x in the interval from zero inclusive to pi over two exclusive. So that's the first quadrant, basically. Um, so four cosine squared of x is equal to three. Uh, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do a thing here that nobody's going to like, but uh, cosine squared of x is equal to three fourths. So technically, when we take the square root of both sides, what we actually get is the absolute value of cosine of x on the left hand side. And on the right hand side, the square root of three over four is just root three over two. I don't think you're gonna lose any points if you skip that step because basically everyone on earth skips that step. Um, so you probably just went straight to the next thing I'm gonna write, which is totally okay, I'm pretty sure. Cosine of x is root three over two or cosine of x is negative root three over two. Now, is this a theme that we're gonna see every year in this type of question? There's some like domain stuff going on, right? We got cosine of x is negative root three over two, but we're only between zero and pi over two. So if you think about the coordinate plane, I'm sure you've thought about this. We have like ASTC. Um, we're in quadrant one. Everything is positive. So cosine cannot be negative, which means this is just an extraneous equation that has shown up. Could not give us an answer that we would include. So we're, we're canceling that out. Then we just have to think, where is cosine root three over two? Think of the unit circle or draw one. You probably have enough time. Um, X is just pi over six. And that's our answer. Let's take a look at part B. So part B is always uh, just the rewriting things section, I guess, of the question. So in this case, we have a log. Uh, we're gonna condense it to a single log in the form log base two of expression. So that's easy enough, I think. Uh, I'm gonna start off, uh, you know, log base two of X, there's nothing to do with it. And then I'm gonna use the property that coefficients become exponents. So this will be the log base two of two cubed. And now I'm going to use the property that addition between logs becomes multiplication within the logs. So this gives me the log base two of two cubed times X. And then two cubed is eight. And uh, I think I'm just going to leave it like that because there's nothing more to do. Okay, that is a single, that is a log base two of expression. So I'm pretty sure that does it. Let's do the trig thing. I love doing trig identities. So we need to rewrite this so that tangent is... Um, Oh, tangent needs to appear exactly once and no other trig functions are involved. They're very specific on what they want here because otherwise it's like an infinite number of answers. So uh, to begin with, so we start with this, that cosecant squared of x minus one is suspicious. So think about the uh, Pythagorean identities that you have memorized. One of them is that one plus cotan squared is cosecant squared, which, mean that, which means that cotan squared is cosecant squared minus one. So we can replace cosecant squared minus one with cotan squared. So we have cotan squared. Now you can go about this in a number of ways. I'm just gonna take the cotan in the denominator and turn it into tangent in the numerator. So for my next step, I'm gonna have six tan squared. 
over tangent. And then I'm going to remember the rule is I can only have one tangent uh, and no other trig functions. Uh, there are no other trig functions, but I'm going to cancel it. I think anybody would at that point. And you just get 6 tan of x. That's the expression that we're going to go with because it follows all the rules. Let's look at uh, the next part. So the next one is pretty much always like solve an equation that's a little bit harder than the ones that are in part A. And you usually have to think about domain stuff. There could be inverse trig. There could be, you know, trig domain stuff. But in this case, it's just exponentials. Um, so we're looking for where m of x is equal to zero. They also always write it in a weird way, in my opinion. Actually, all the equations, they could have just said, like, solve this equation, but they never do. So m of x equals zero means e to the 2x minus e to the x minus 12 is equal to zero. Uh, I'm going to do a substitution here. I don't think you need to, to get all the points. I'm just going to say u is e to the x because this will turn it into something a little more familiar. So e to the 2x is e to the x squared. So really, we just have u squared minus u minus 12 equals zero. So once you have this, you can uh, factor it or use the quadratic formula. does not matter. I like to factor. So we're going to need a uh, plus 3 and a minus 4 gives us negative 12 and negative 1. So that's good. Um, from here, we get either u is equal to negative 3 or u is equal to 4. Let's go back to the original, right? u is equal to e to the x. So our equations actually are e to the x is negative 3 or um, e to the x is equal to 4. Now, if you think about it, e to the x equals negative 3 has no solutions. The reason it has no solutions is that the range of e to the x is basically y is greater than 0. e to the x is always greater than 0. It can never equal negative 3. No solution there. So that's just like an extraneous equation, I guess. Um, and then the other one, I'm going to take the natural log of both sides and just get x is equal to the natural log of 4, which is the only answer that we're going to get. All right, that's the entire question. I hope this was helpful, and good luck.